Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 66. No sharks, but Mario Lemieux. Gotta give the shout out to Mario. Josh Hosang? Mm, yeah. S- Super Mario. Yeah, Super Mario. There you go. Super Mario right here too. Uh, so, actually this week we're going to be talking about obviously the week in review. And that's kind of like the big chunk of it. Yep, we'll talk about some news around the league as well as uh, the week ahead mm-hmm. against some of those guys. And... Updates on our EA SHL team and fantasy hockey. That is correct. Are you ready to start the show? Ready. Okay, so uh, as many of you can tell, I'm uh, feeling pretty sick right now, but I'm, I'm here doing uh, the best I can. I brought some some things to help me out. I got the uh, the cough drops here. I've got my chloroseptic uh, wannabe stuff. I've got my nasal spray stuff, and I've got a pack of Welch's because my son left it in my backpack. So the same way we're opening the show, every uh, show in the month of November, Movember, of course, we have these ridiculous mustaches on our faces. Uh, We're doing that to help raise awareness for men's health issues like uh, mental health as well as uh, prostate cancer. So uh, we have the, was it moteam.co that we've got set up? You want to go ahead and kind of plug that? Yeah, we'll put that down here at the bottom. Okay. Uh, You can also go to the information tab down below and you can click on the link. Uh, we'll be taking donations through the end of the month, so if you'd like to donate something, please do. Uh, we, as promised, we're going to highlight the best comments that we've gotten so far. <laughs> uh, so here's the first one. First one uh, is coming from Ryan Sontag, and he says, uh, Aaron and Paul, did you guys glue your lips to the trimmings from Joe's beard? No? <laughs> okay, good. It definitely doesn't look like it. <laughs> nice. Uh, Pete Smoot, oh, look, uh, it's a Mario and uh, Aaron. <laughs> And an anonymous supporter. That thing is gross. <laughs> All fairly accurate, I would yes. say. Not bad. So give us your best shot, uh, and we will highlight it on the show. Uh, if you want to be anonymous, you can be anonymous. And then you can brag that it was you, even if it wasn't. I, so, got, I got a feeling that if I shaved this off, I could make Joe's beard from the trimming of my mustache. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> gross. There's <laughs> a lot more going on here than there is going on all the way around Joe's, I think. I don't know. Yeah. Sure. Knows. Anyway, um, so again, um, we wanted to go ahead and plug that suicide um, prevention lifeline. I'm going to look at the board here so I don't get the number wrong. It's 1-800-273-8255. If you are dealing with something that uh, is is a very difficult time for you and you need someone to talk to, um, they are a great resource for you. Also, I would, uh, re, um, I would put you back to episode number 63. We spoke with Jamie Baker. He had a lot of great points to talk about on the subject. So if there are some things that maybe you feel you might be able to get some, some help with by hearing what he had to say, he had a lot of really good points, a lot of um, really good uh, suggestions and uh, some other uh, organizations that he pointed to that mm-hmm. might be of help. So uh, please do check that out if you are struggling. Okay, we are going to move on now. We are going to talk about Week in Review. Right. Um, so the last two weeks, we kind of got spoiled. Three up, three down, three up, three down. <laughs> we got six in a row. It was awesome. Uh, then we uh, this week here, we, we go up against Edmonton once again. And I think you kind of saw this as um, kind of coming, right? Yeah. Edmonton didn't want to get uh, the beat down that first time around. They are going to show up the second time around, and that's kind of what happened. Yeah, they were, I think in the first game uh, where the Sharks beat them, they were kind of coming off of a back-to-back, or there was it was like a long road trip for them. Mm-hmm. So this time around, they were fresher, and it looked like they were fresher. And it also looked like the Sharks were at the end of their six-game win streak, which they were. Um, the Sharks, I think the last two games of that win streak, they were kind of getting a little complacent. They were lucky to win in a way. Uh, they found ways to win. Um, and it showed against Edmonton because Edmonton wasn't going to slow down or take any punches. So Edmonton really took it to the Sharks. Now, the Sharks looked good, I thought, in the first period. And then the second and third, it just fell apart. And you could tell they were just not in it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but after the game, Logan Couture was asked about uh, the winning streak coming to an end. And here's what he had to say about it. What do I think of it? Well, we better play a lot better than we did tonight. Or- uh, it could get ugly, so uh, I think it's a wake-up call for us right now. I think um, you know you win six in a row, and ma- winning kind of masks when you're not playing your best. If you find a way to win, and I think the last couple games maybe we've, that's that's the way the games have gone. We haven't played our game, and we found a way to win. But tonight, uh, I think we got what we deserved. at loss. 
So, uh, yeah, Logan basically saying, you know, they didn't deserve the win there, so obviously they didn't get the win. Um, there was some poor defense going on in the Edmonton game. Like you said, second and third period, they kind of, you know, fell back, shut it down mm -hmm. a little bit. Not sure why. Um, you know, when you're coming off of uh, six straight, it's it's hard to expect that you're going to get seventh, eighth, ninth. Like you had said during the live, no team's going to get a 40 win streak, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, it would have been nice, but at the same time, you know, all good things come to an end. That was the end of, of that win streak. And, uh, you know, from there, they move on, and we go and we play uh, the Vegas Golden Knights in Vegas. Now, right. that was a weird one because we had talked about in the week before <laughs> about who should the starting goaltender be, right? And we were saying, well, maybe, um, you know, Dell might start, you know, the first game or the third game, but he's definitely not starting in Vegas. Right. So, um, they start Aaron Dell in Vegas, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're thinking, oh, my goodness, this isn't going to go well. Hurdle was out, right, because of the injury that he had. So um, with Dell in the net and Hurdle out, it just didn't look like that was going to be a game that, uh, that the Sharks were going to pull out. Uh, but they, they were equal to the task. Right, and it, what's nice to see is they bounce back after that loss to Edmonton, and it was kind of a beating, I'd say, uh, against Edmonton. Now, I, I don't mind the Sharks kind of getting their game handed to them in a way uh, every now and then because to me it's better that they lose handedly like that than um, losing by like a goal or losing in overtime or, or something like that because they don't really have much to build on or, or things that they want to change because they're like oh we kind of played well we should we should don't have to change anything mm -hmm. I think because they got beat so bad they got a real good look at themselves and be like okay the winning streak is over the pressure to keep it going is not really there now it's turn around bounce back and let's get another streak going. So it's good to see them bounce back in Vegas with Aaron Tell in net and no Tomas Hurdle, which yeah. is a big, big deal. Uh, Tomas Hurdle is leading the team in faceoff percentage for the guys who have taken the most faceoffs, and he's at like 54%, mm -hmm. which is nuts. Usually guys hover around, you know, 51, 52, or 40, 48, 49, and he's well above that. So mm -hmm. he's definitely a key guy for uh, key moments, if you will. <laughs> but... Uh, not no hurdle. Aaron Dell net kind of set up for a loss there, and Aaron Dell stood on his head. He did. He certainly did stand on his head. You know, the funny thing is, what we just talked about was the defense in the Edmonton game kind of fell apart, right? And what did we see during the Vegas game? They played pretty tight defensively, right? Now the the score ended up being only two to one. There was an overtime winner. We'll get to that in just a second here, but. Um, you know, it does go back to something that I've referenced a few times on this show that Logan Couture said last season, right? From good defense comes offense. And yes, they only got the one goal on offense before they went to the uh, to get to overtime there. Mm -hmm. um, but they took care of their own zone. I mean, it's very simple. If they, if Vegas scores one more goal than they did, this game doesn't go to overtime. Same thing with the next game, right? So they played a, a good defensive game. They shut it down as best they could. And Aaron Dell like you said, stood on his head, absolutely stood on his head, was deserving of a star, didn't get one, we'll get to that as well. Yeah. But um, no, I mean, that win, you can you can solely hang on Aaron Dell, like yeah. just, just playing phenomenal. And, and you know what's funny is I've seen him at practices and I've seen you know, the way he plays in games. He's a, little, he's a lot more erratic than uh, Martin Jones is. Martin Jones likes to play like the angles. He wants to be set in his spot, whereas Dell's kind of, he likes to move around and be agile a lot mm -hmm. more. So... Um, you know, I've, I've just seen the way he plays, and I don't think he's as bad as some people make him out to be. Um, and especially when the defense is playing well in front of him, he gets that opportunity to go out and make the big save. There was a couple of saves that I saw. Uh, I think one of them was in overtime where it was right before the goal. Mm -hmm. um, a shot and a save, and then another shot like right away. A rebound. The rebound yeah. shot, and he just threw that glove out there, and it's just amazing, big, amazing save. So yeah. uh, hats off to Aaron Dell for stepping up. It seems like it was... One of those games where he was challenged probably by the coaching staff mm -hmm. to say, you know what, uh, we should be playing Martin Jones right now. We don't have all of our firepower with Hurdle out. I'm throwing you into the anyway. You know, I'm, I, you're going to have to stand on your head and do it, and he did. I mean, this goes to Pete DeVore's kind of pulse on the team, right? Like he mm -hmm. knew that that would still give Aaron Dell. Aaron Dell would give the team a chance to win. Now, think about it this way. We talk about this, or I've talked about this. Uh, Vegas still has zero wins from their backup goalies. And that's yeah. Aaron Dell's <laughs> either third or fourth win this year. And that one was a beaut, too. Yeah. So uh, it, the Sharks are comfortable playing Aaron Dell. It's not like they have to play Martin Jones and they go, oh, it's a throwaway game. Let's just, we're going to take the loss here. So that's where I think the Sharks are a little bit better than Vegas. Vegas relies too much on Marc Andre Fleury. Uh, to win games, and the Sharks don't really have to do that, which is yeah. they're fortunate that they don't have to do that. Um, 
One, one other thing that happened in this game, I thought Evander Kane got just mobbed in this game and didn't draw any penalties, and I think he could have at least had two. Mm-hmm. One, I, I specifically remember him getting into the zone and uh, getting stood up at the line when he didn't have the puck. It should have been an interference call, and they didn't call it. And even the announcers, Randy and, and I think it was Hetty, uh, were like blown away, like, how is that not a call? Uh, yeah. It's kind of a joke. So um, I think... Um, Good on Evander Kane, though. You'd mentioned this, I think, during the live that I think uh, that that he kept his composure yeah. and didn't lose it and take a penalty himself for retaliation. So it's good on him. And he, there was a quote of him, or no, it was a quote of Couture at the end of his uh, interview. I don't know if you caught that at the end of the game. Okay. Uh, they asked about Ryan Reeves because Ryan Reeves That's did get right. the third star, and he said he was pretty quiet out there, or something, right? Yeah. He uh, said he something. Was, he was pretty quiet out there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he gave him a little chirp there. It was kind of funny though, and not in a bad way. Just yeah. kind of. <laughs> poking fun, poking the bear a little. Yeah, no I guess. doubt. So yeah, Ryan Reeves gets a third star with, I think it was a shot on goal and twelve hits. Again, the statistician being somebody who's in, in Vegas, and it's very subjective, right? So, but the person, the people who choose the three stars is the media, the yeah. hometown media. Yeah. So the Vegas media got to choose, and it's I think it's specific. It changes every game specific to like okay. one media group. Um, so they got to choose the stars, which is just ridiculous. So, um, yeah, it's a little homer pick, but, I mean, it's so disrespectful to Aaron Dell. I got yeah. a little angry about this, and I tweeted about mm-hmm. it earlier, but um, Aaron Dell, to me, should have been the number one star. Not the number three star, number yeah. one. Yeah. He made 37 saves on 38 shots. Anytime you get a goalie that, that lets in one or less goals and over 30, over 30, 30 shots, yeah. it's usually the first star of the game, or a star of the game, mm-hmm. right? So they gave Logan Couture the number one star. They gave Braden McNabb, who tied the game, on his second goal of the season, and there's only two goals coming against the San Jose Sharks. Mm-hmm. And then they give the third star to Ryan Reeves. Like, that's just a <laughs> joke. It's, it's, to me, the, the one thing that like it got me angry about is the NHL's going to look at this and go, okay, come on, because these guys use those, those three stars in their contract negotiations. Yeah. They're going to say, hey, look, I've had this many one star, two star, third star right. kind of thing. Um, and that's just, it's making a mockery of it. And I don't want to make it like, I don't want to make it too serious, but I also don't want to take it too lightly where a guy like Ryan Reeves with 10 minutes of ice time gets a third star. <laughs> with no points, he was a plus one and 12 hits. Like, come on, man. So uh, to me, like, the NHL is going to look at this and be like, okay, maybe we shouldn't let the media do this anymore. Yeah. Maybe we should have some one of our statisticians that's at the game mm-hmm. make the call on the three stars of the game. Maybe we figure out a formula. Maybe we do something else, you know? So I just... To me, it was a little disrespect to the game. Yeah. And, and not to get all Don Cherry on everyone, but it's just, you know, <laughs> like, it, it, I like it taken a little bit more seriously. Sure. And I think it was very disrespectful to Aaron Dell for such a great performance that he had. That's fair enough. And speaking of being disrespectful, um, when Timo uh, bulldozed his way, <laughs> first of all, I wanted to talk about that, that real quick. It was a quick. great power move. Timo, uh, we, we know when Timo's at his best, and Pete mm-hmm. DeBoer said this as well, and I think even Timo has recognized it. Yeah, he's his best when he's going uh, as a power forward and he's driving the net and this t- this goal that he scored was him literally driving through the net i mean it came off the moorings um this guy just went and he puts the puck in and he backs into the the net and knocks mm-hmm. it off the off the moorings there so uh, it was just a really big power move uh, by Timo Meyer there to get that puck in the net, get the you know the initial goal right. Um, it was funny because Mark Andre Fleury went full Cobra Kai and uh, he swept the leg. Uh, he put, swings his his uh, catching glove out there to take uh, Timo's leg out as he's skating away from the goal there. I think Timo might have said something to him because he had his head bent down. Looked like it. I think he was uh, chirping him a little bit, yeah. and I think that's what set uh, Flurry off because even when Timo fell, it looked like he was just kind of like, oh, I fell over. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And then he pops right back up, and he had no problem. He wasn't looking back or anything. You know, Usually when guys pretend like nothing happened, they're part of whatever had just happened. Right. right? So. I think uh, Timo did an awesome job bulldozing his way to the net, doing what makes him successful in this league, and it get, got him a goal, yeah. and it got underneath the skin of Mark Andre Fleury. Definitely, yeah. And, and, and it, you but, had something that you want to say about Fleury. I know we didn't put it on the board, but Aaron's just <laughs> so excited. So I, go ahead. It took me a while to figure to find this stat, yeah. and I went to natural hat uh, stat trick. Ha- stat. I keep saying hat trick. Natural stat trick <laughs> to find this uh, penalties drawn by goalies. Now Mark Andre Fleury. I thought would have been the leader in the league Mm -hmm. in this category, especially last year. So I looked at last year's stats, no, he was not. Uh, And I was looking at penalties drawn by goalies. Um, I couldn't find it on NHL.com. I don't know if I was looking in the wrong spot. um, Anyway, he has four penalties drawn this year 
already because he had a penalty. Um, wasn't it this game, right? A goalie interference? Was it this game? Uh, are they... Ex- I can't remember. I'm, I'm not sure. Sue Mella. Wasn't Sue Mella scored the goal and they called it back on goalie interference? Yeah, they did. They called but it, it wasn't back, a penalty. Not a penalty, though. Okay. I thought it was for some reason. I no. thought Timo got called But he for still it. leads the league currently with four. He has four drawn penalties. Yeah. Now, to me, Flurry embellishes a little bit. He gets touched anywhere and he flails around inside. You know he got touched. Like, right. you know. And he also plays at the top of his crease. And I think Brody Brazil is kind of talking about this a little bit uh, in the intermission report that gray Uh, area yeah Yeah. where he's like well his kind of his butts in the blue paint but his skates aren't like how do they determine it for goalie interference because the goalie Mm -hmm. should be in the crease and and that's exactly how flurry plays like he knows there's guys that are gonna be coming in he knows he's gonna get bumped he's gonna flail and he's gonna get the call more often than not Mm -hmm. and in this case same thing i thought it was a little weak call i I was upset because i wanted sue to do well and and score i thought he uh, played a really good game so um, I just it really ticks me off. So I looked it up, and Mark Andre Fleury is leading the league this right. season with four. Last year he only had three total, and he's got four already. He's already beaten how many he's drawn. Compared so he's to last gotten year. better at it, is what you're saying. Yes, he's more efficient. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, all right then. So uh, after the Vegas game, was there anything else we were going to talk about in the Vegas game? Actually, uh, no, <clears throat> that's no? about it. Okay. So uh, moving on from the Vegas game, oh, we went. Into, I guess just the winner from well, Logan. Okay, there you go. So actually, yeah, that's that's perfect because it's kind of going to be a repeat what we're right. going to talk about. So Logan gets the OT winner. Um, a nice little defensive play there by Mark Edward Vlasic to mm-hmm. swing a stick and knock the puck directly up center ice where Logan happened to be already sprinting. Uh, just an amazing uh, little tap there. I don't know if he actually saw that that's where Couture was or if he was just trying to get out of the did, zone. Because he wasn't trying to clear that puck. He was trying to make a play there. I feel like he had an idea that that's where Couture was. Yeah. And Couture looked like he was a little bit out of gas. But he was just chugging his best to get there. Uh, makes a nice shot, uh, initial save, and then Flurry kind of picks his pads back up and then boom, yeah. he, uh, taps I, it right back in. He got Flurry kind of off balance mm-hmm. with the first shot and then he was kind of backtracking and he kind of fell down. Yeah. And he just tapped in the rebound. It was fantastic. Yeah. No, it was great. So uh, captain picks up, you know, the OT winner. They went uh, two to one. Uh, deja vu all over again. Next day we play, or not <laughs> the next day, next game, we play the Islanders. And uh, we'll fast forward and we'll start talking about some of the stuff afterwards. But Logan ends up putting in again the OT winner. This time, a uh, beautiful job by Evander Kane mm-hmm. uh, battling on the boards there. And he makes a nice little sauce pass uh, right across over to, uh, to Logan, who just one times it in. It's basically both those goals in the Islanders games were sauce passes. Yeah. Because Ferraro had an unbelievable saucer to this kid. And and you know, we (laughs) talked about him during the live. Mario Ferraro (laughs) is absolutely, he's a stud, this kid. Um, I'm loving what I'm seeing from him on all sides of the puck. I mean, he offensively, uh, he's doing a great job moving the puck around. Obviously, that pass mm-hmm. uh, to set that goal up for Sorensen. Defensively, he's playing pretty responsibly. Yes, he makes the rookie mistake now and then, uh, but they're fewer and farther between, I feel. And he's also not afraid to throw the body around. I mean, the kid, he can he can hit. Right. You know, so that's one of the things that they were very excited about getting Shimmick back was that it's a guy who goes out there and he hits and it's natural to him. They're not asking like a guy like Tim Heed to go out there and hit and Tim Heed you know, is what, 180 pounds soaking wet. You it's know? not so easy to, to drop hits like that if no. you're not used to doing it because there's a lot of timing involved. Yeah. It's just not easy. So asking a guy like Tim Heed, who is very small, yeah. he'll bounce off guys well, and he'll probably miss. And, and Heed has at least played at the NHL level for a few seasons, mm-hmm. played. He's got a ha- handful of minutes a night. But, you know, Mario Ferraro was basically coming out of college. He didn't get a chance to even play at the AHL speed. He's mm-hmm. going straight to NHL speed and he's making these hits. So to your point, you know he's he's matched that speed already mm-hmm. uh, to be able to uh, to make those hits and whatnot. So very impressed with Mario Ferraro's game, yeah. Like all up and down, uh, you know, this season, let alone in this game, yeah. which he did a great job too. And with this win, the Sharks tied an NHL record for the 43rd straight win yeah. with two goals or less in the game. Uh, uh, two or fewer. Fewer is the correct word. Two or fewer. Yeah, because it's relating to numbers anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> it's a it's a grammatical thing because Brody Brazil brought it up. He said his wife called him out on it, so I have to do it too. I'm sorry. I apologize. Thanks, but wife. That's what it is. Thanks. Fire away. Anyway, does your wife have a mustache like this, bro? Come let's on. Go to the, let's go to the clip <laughs> of Pete DeBoer talking about that stat right now. Well, you know, I think 
if you defend well in this league, you're going to have a chance to win every night. And I think, you know, that's the moral of that story. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, you know, um, I just heard about that record, I think, yesterday or, or maybe even today. So, um, you know, but it, it's great reinforcement for our group for me that, you know, if we defend well and, and uh, our goalies play well, we have a chance to win every night. So DeBoer there saying that, you know, he hopes that this reinforces, right, that style of play where, you know, the mentality should be, you know, defense uh, from good defense goes, comes offense. I'm sure right? he's so, going, De Pete DeBoer hears about this stat and goes yeah. into the locker room and goes, see, yeah. I told you. <laughs> no doubt. So, uh, you know, that was the one thing is, you know, again, we talk about, you know, when the, the Sharks are playing well five on five. Um, and, and they're they're locking it down in their zone. The goals will come now. Again, in this case, it was only a two-one win, and it took overtime to do it. But again, all it takes is one breakdown where the puck goes in the back of your net. We're not even going to overtime, right? So uh, let forget one extra point. You'd get no points at all. Right. So um, you know, again, good to see uh, that they were able to play the system mm -hmm. and stick with the system, and that this whole streak is still alive. I think it's great. It's a nice yeah. little thing. It's not like it's huge to me, but it seems pretty obvious. You know, you keep them you know, two or fewer, yeah. and uh, you know, you're probably going to pick up the W then. But uh, also give kudos to Martin Jones here. Oh yeah, I, he played a really great game too, and Absolutely. it's nice to see Dell play a great game and then didn't go to Dell mm -hmm. for the Islander game. They went back to Martin Jones, and he picked up his game and. Played really well. Not to say that it was all him, but he did a good, fantastic job, especially on the penalty kill. Yeah. Because they had six penalties to kill. They were least, six exactly. for six on the penalty kill yeah. that night. Now, you don't want to give a, any team, any team, uh, an opportunity <laughs> like that. Times. Six times over? That's yeah. ridiculous. I think most power plays in this league, um, going up against a penalty kill, that's not the top penalty kill in the league. It's probably going to put one out of six in, right? So again, there's where that comes in again. You know, if if they're not playing on point on the PK there, mm -hmm. one of those goes in. We're not even talking about overtime. But again, Logan puts it in for the OT winner. Uh, beautiful job there, and you know they they pick up the two points. Yeah. He's now he has uh, two overtime winners in the two consecutive games, right? That tied. Some There's some other something. record there too. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, Brock records. Nelson, I think, had just done it. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> going into the game. That's what that it was. Been the third game. Yeah. yeah. So Logan says I could do that too, <laughs> <laughs> and he did. So uh, okay, good. We're we're done with the the week in review. Then we're gonna move on. We're gonna talk about a little bit of a news that's going around the league. Uh, just actually two little stories. And for that, we're gonna go ahead and um, have this segment brought to you guys by La Villa Delicatessen. La, La Villa, they have a nice little shop there. They've got um, the Chris combo. They got the raviolis. They've got nice sports memorabilia in there. And since uh, we're talking about news that's around the league, uh, again. League. La Villa, we feed the league. And they're in downtown Willow Glen. Yes, they part. are. <laughs> and if you are planning on getting anything for Thanksgiving, uh, if you haven't put your order in, it may already be too late. Uh, but <laughs> you may just go ahead and give them a call anyway and uh, see if they can hook you up um, and tell them Paul and Aaron sent you. Yep. Okay, fire away. What do we got here? Uh, let's see. Well, first big news is Mike Bab Babcock is out in Toronto. Uh, he was yeah. a big hiring back in Toronto a couple years ago. Um, I think he signed, gosh, like a five or six year deal too. Um, I think he still had a number of years left on his contract, but apparently he lost the locker room. Um, and people say, you know, say the same thing about Pete DeBoer, but uh, there's some very outspoken yeah. members, and I'm not gonna go into it at all. You can go find this all <laughs> on your own, but uh, there are some outspoken former players that are no longer in the NHL, no longer playing, but a lot of guys, I didn't even realize this until I started reading into it more. Um, he ended a lot of guys' careers where they just didn't play anymore, and they probably could have or should have been playing. Mm. Um, but anyway, the, I saw the news and I go, oh, great. Here we go. The Sharks are on a six-game winning streak when it happened, or they're in the middle of their streak. And um, <laughs> once the Sharks start losing again, you're going to hear all the Pete DeBoer haters coming out of the woodwork saying, you know, Pete should be fired and Babcock should be hired. And Patrick Marlowe, for one, would probably welcome it because he is knows the system and was there and he was one of the re Babcock was one of the reasons that he went there. Um, he also played for him, Team Canada, I believe, when mm -hmm. they won the gold medal. So uh, very familiar with Jill Thornton and Patrick Marlowe. Um, but I don't think that uh, that I I don't think that should happen. I, mean, I was just like worried that uh, okay, here's where all the Pete DeBoer haters are going to come out, and as soon as the Sharks start losing, they're going to want him to go there. But who knows? After reading some of that other stuff, it's like oh wow, maybe 
you know, I don't think it would be a good idea, obviously. But um, maybe some other teams. I was thinking Calgary is in a big slide right now. They've actually been shut out. I think it was three in their last four games. Wow, really? Shut out. This team that has a lot of depth scoring. Yeah. Um, and Johnny Hockey on the team has been shut out. And I know because he's on my fantasy team. He's <laughs> killing me right now. But I was like, oh, maybe that would be a good fit. Because I feel like that's probably the next coach that's going to go out right now. is Calgary and maybe one or two other teams that are just not off to a okay. good start that they thought they would be. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting that former players are coming out and saying uh, things against Babcock. But current players, like you said, Marlowe and Tavares, right. were saying, no, he's it's too bad that he's been fired and you know, whatever. I wonder if that has anything to do with it, that plays into it at all. It's interesting because Marlowe's older. If, I don't know if you knew that. Well, yeah. He's 40. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, he, Babcock is kind of one of the last few kind of hard-nosed coaches. Okay. Kind of like uh, John Tortorella. Oh, God. <laughs> not the same. Not the same, but just... Right. It's different, and today's game, more younger players that come up, are they're more team-friendly coaches, okay. if you will. That, that's what I heard was, and, and who Toronto put in as the interim coach was their AHL team coach, mm-hmm. who coached a lot of those guys, and they won a Calder Cup together. So, they have familiarity right. with the coach, uh, he was a good, friendly players coach, if sure. you will, that's, that's the term I was looking for. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see if Toronto starts bouncing back and that coach starts to win the room over mm-hmm. and they get back on the right track or not. But I think it's fantastic. that I think their streak's going to continue of not winning a cup. Sorry. <laughs> I, I like those streaks. It makes me happy, except for the Sharks. <laughs> but, I mean, they go back to 1967, <laughs> I believe. They haven't been to the finals since then. Okay. Sharks have been in the finals once, twice. Once? Once. Almost <laughs> twice. But at least once since, you know. Once. <laughs> Still. Yeah. I, I, yeah, for sure. No, that's yeah. good. We can, you know, we can celebrate other teams' sorrow as well. I'm just saying there's teams worse than the Sharks. <laughs> okay. That's fair. It's not always doom and gloom. We're not, you know, the sky's not always <laughs> falling on us. Okay. It's falling on a lot of other teams, too. No, very good. Well, uh, one guy that was uh, not really falling but shoving people to the ground uh, was Robert Bertuzzo of the St. Louis Blues. Uh, it sounds like uh, Arvidsson from Nashville was kind of hanging out in the paint, and uh, <laughs> Arvidsson didn't like that. Or I'm sorry, Bertuzzo didn't like that. So um, he went to block a shot. I believe he, he kind of knelt down. The shot went wide, and Arvidsson was in the paint. Um, Bennington wasn't even bothered by Arvidsson, he was kind of off on the left post, and Arvidsson's kind of off on the right side, and he's, he's got his back completely to Bortuzzo, and he comes over and just gives him this humongous cross-check, boom, right in the numbers, and uh, to the point where, I mean, Arvidsson has no clue that it's coming because he's not looking at him at all. I heard, saw some people arguing, well, this is a professional player. A, sh- a little cross-check like that shouldn't take him off of his feet. So he was embellishing. I'm like, guys, guys, time out. First of all, Yes, if he knows it's coming, he can brace himself. If he doesn't know it's coming, he's standing there and he takes a shot in the numbers. Mm-hmm. How's he supposed to, you know, brace himself for that? Second, if he's embellishing, did a pretty good job banging his head off the crossbar on the way down, boys. I mean, come on now. So he's inside of the net. Arvidsson is because uh, he just got shoved in there. Bortuzzo bar down. Yeah, bar. <laughs> Bar Bortuski, Bardonski. Anyway, so Bartuzo <laughs> thinks he he's diving, right? So he looks over at the ref and he yells at the ref because the ref's calling him a penalty on him. And before Arvidsson has a chance to get up, Bartuzo again cross checks him in the back. <laughs> Arvidsson's basically on the ground like a frog, right? <laughs> like he's got all fours. He's on all fours. When Bortuzo nails him down, he like compresses Arvidsson so much that he like rebounds and springs back up and, and falls over. It was just watch the watch the the, the what he called the cross check on the ground. It's ridiculous. So um, you know, I thought it was it was crazy because he got two minutes for the initial cross check. Nothing else during the game for the second cross check, which was two minute penalty. That's all he got, that's and then terrible. for the second one, he didn't get anything during the game. Um, Bennington even came over like and gives Arvidsson a nice shove while Arvidsson's hurt. Now I don't think Bennington knew that he was hurt or anything, um, but that's kind of a you know another you know salt in the wound kind of right. thing. The guy's already injured. Why are you still hitting him? Leave him alone, you know. <laughs> so, um, so Bortuzzo then gets a four-game suspension, and 
everybody on the Twitter sphere basically is calling for at least ten games, unless they're Blues fans. Right. Um, you know, oh no, he was uh, his embellishment is his fault. You know, it's basically well, we saw, blaming the victim. Right. The guy so. in our live from St. Louis was saying yeah. he thinks he got off lightly. That's so not all St. Louis. Fans. Not all. Yeah, and I did want to make a point of that. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up. Is that yeah? Not not all St. Louis Blues fans. Uh, we're, we're coming to his defense. There was a guy that was on our live uh, just before this, which by the way, if you've not subscribed, you should hit that button and uh, you'll know when we do go live. Apparently we're converting fans now. Uh, this is news to me. Uh, this St. Louis fan said yeah. that, you know, he's kind of a, we won't call you out, don't worry about it, but he was kind of a uh, you know, closet shark fan, you know, because he likes watching the Sharks Vegas uh, rivalry, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, you know, he's, he likes the show. So we might have converted one. You know, we're doing God's work over here, guys. Okay, so um, no, he was just saying that, you know, uh, it was it was a bad hit, it was a bad cross check, and I, I kind of came back and said, yeah, I agree with you. You know, I would like to see a lot of those cross checks called. There's too many times where you see a guy that's standing there next to the boards, and it's, you know, he's just kind of puck protecting, and the defenseman's way of trying to get him off his balance is to cross check him repeatedly in the back. Mm. Um, I don't I don't like that. I think you use your body um, to, to push him up against the boards. Use your, put your leg in between their legs and drive their hips to the boards. That gets them off their balance. That gives you the opportunity to get the puck. But repeated cross checks, first of all, I'm using the word cross checks. That's a penalty. It's called cross checking. They should be calling this, right? So I think the Department of Player Safety really dropping the ball here. It should have been more. Um, and I'd like to see the referees start calling all the little cross checks, not just for the Sharks and not just because it's the Blues, but across the league. Guys are, you know, they're, they're getting hurt by getting cross checked all the time. And you, you brought up Mike Ricci basically ending his career off of this. Yeah. Yeah. He took a lot of shots in the back, standing in front of the net. Uh, and he had a really bad back in the, in the, tail end of his career when yeah. he missed a lot of games so um his career would have been extended i'm sure some other guys probably too that mm -hmm. take a beating standing in front of the net joe pavelski i'm sure is yeah hurting every night because he gets hit i feel like he got when he was on the sharks watching him almost every night he was yeah. getting hit all the time yeah. and dumped in front of the net so uh, see and i and i have no problem with getting your hands up on a guy and and giving them the shoves and that's totally cool but when you're using your stick in a cross-checking motion, and you're constantly drilling a guy in the back, especially when you're hitting him in the back, like he, it's in his numbers, you yeah. can't see. All he can do is get in hockey position, embrace himself, right? That's all he can do. And it's just those constant hits, I wish they would just call it. I think it would limit the amount of times you see stuff like that. Goals would probably go up, yeah. you know? <laughs> Excuse me. And um, I, I think there's better ways for guys um, to, to use their abilities and their skills and their size and their weight um, to get guys off of pucks other than repeatedly cross-checking them in the back. That's my take on we it. We might see this kind of springboard into next uh, next season mm. where the refs kind of focus on one thing that they're going to start calling to kind of ring it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm sure because there's suspension exactly for cross-checking. Right. You don't really see a whole lot of suspensions from a cross-check. Yeah. Uh, this one was that vicious. That kind of, if you want to go look it up, you can go see it. But um, maybe next year they're going to say, because a couple years ago they focused on slashing. Yeah. People were getting slashed and they were breaking hands and it was taking out a lot of the star players. Now maybe they'll go into the yeah. cross checking thing. Well, I feel like he should have gotten even more than like 10 or more than that. Um, he only got four. And speaking of four games, we do have four games coming up this week for the San Jose Sharks. Nice. One back to backer. I know I'm working those transitions. <laughs> like I said, I'm hopped up on a whole lot of medication right now, but I'm staying focused for y'all. So. We got four games coming up there. The first one's a back-to-back, -back, right? So we got Tuesday, Wednesday. And so are the third and fourth. It's kind of awkward because of Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's right. There's two back-to-backs. Okay. Two separate back-to-backs. Two separate back-to-backs. Four games. Yes. Right. So Tuesday we play. L.A. L.A. In L.A. In L.A. Yep. That's the key there. Playing okay. in L.A. And L.A. is actually, as of late, in the last week or two, they've been beating some beating some teams that they probably shouldn't be. Okay. Because they should be towards the bottom of the league. So not a game to be taken lightly. Uh, I feel like the Sharks do pretty well in L.A. They kind of get up for those games, uh, especially in the last year or two when the Kings have not been good. Uh, it's also nice to see because it's Thanksgiving break this week. I think there's going to be a lot of Sharks fans down there traveling. Um, nice. To go watch the game, which would be fun. I love, love when... Like even in the Vegas game, there was a fair amount of Sharks fans that were there. And when the Sharks score, and you hear fans cheering, <laughs> right? I think it's fantastic. Yeah, it's it's great to see that fans are traveling. And I'm sure Teal City Crew SoCal yeah. will, will definitely be there. So yeah. um, I think they're planning to go to. Uh, yeah, I think this game. LA I can't game. remember. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so back to back. Thankfully, it's L.A. So they're just going to L.A. and they're coming right back and playing mm -hmm. Winnipeg the next night. 
Yeah, they'll be playing at home against right. Winnipeg. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah. So, uh, sure, it's a travel day, but it's not very far. Yeah. We've done that flight, what, hour? <laughs> hour and a half, maybe? Not a big deal, yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. I'm just sure they don't mind either. <laughs> uh, then we have Thanksgiving on Thursday, so no games, but... Um, then uh, following up with Friday, and the Friday game against LA again, it's a 1 p.m. game, and the Sharks just do not do well in those afternoon games. That's right. But, I mean, this one is at least at home, so we'll have the home and crowd behind them. against right? LA. Yeah. So it'll be... A lot of beat LA chants going yeah. on, yeah. And the crowd's a little more subdued because it's more family night. Okay. And I'm a family man. No, no offense to it, but I understand when there's a lot more kids and younger crowd the the game's not as engaged and not as engaged that's not the right word but the crowd's not as rowdy okay i should say so it's a it's a different vibe it's more family okay. vibe than right. normal cool um no and not knocking it you know yeah. it is what it is <laughs> so so then, so then saturday we travel to arizona which mm -hmm. again is not that far so and it's an early game on friday so they'll get a little bit of rest oh that's true yeah right so it's not so it's not so terrible so yeah, two back-to-backs, but not as bad as it could be. Right. It's not like they're flying to New York and playing the Rangers and then coming back and playing L.A. or something. Right. Um, so, four games on the docket. How many points would you be happy with out of a possible eight? Possible eight. I think, um, I think the L.A. games, you got to win. So, right away, there's four points that, that should be in the bank right there. Um, the Winnipeg game, um, we've we've already played Winnipeg this season. I forget how that went, but I know that Winnipeg's struggling on the defensive side. Uh, they've had some big losses in terms of personnel. Um, I would not be surprised if they bring some scouts along with them uh, to that game to uh, to see. <laughs> Maybe the GM himself. Would be mm, a... Yeah, I, I wouldn't be shocked. Would not at all be shocked because you know what? We're dressing seven defensemen and we don't need all of them. We really don't. <laughs> That's like... Uh, Oh, you need some defensemen? Oh, look how many we have. Yeah. Look at all these shiny seven <laughs> defensemen we have. We got so many defensemen, we got one with a concussion, and we still can dress seven. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked at all if Winnipeg brings their scout and their GM along with them. Uh, maybe uh, maybe he makes a little deal there with uh, with old Doug. Huh? What do yeah. you say? Sure. Yeah, with the dentist, right? That's the right. nickname? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, I would not I, I, I would like to see uh, a win out of that game, obviously. I want to see a win out of every game, but... Um, I think Winnipeg is another team that we can beat. You shut down Line A, you shut down like Wheeler, right? You mm -hmm. shut those guys down, and uh, you've got a really good opportunity to win. Now, a lot of that might be riding on when Hurdle returns. Although, again, Barclay has stepped up, fi you know, fine in those roles. He's done a nice job. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think it's a winnable game. I really do. Now, Arizona. How do you feel about Arizona, though? Because they're a pretty good team this season now. Uh, yeah, they are. I think out of these four teams, Arizona's probably the toughest, which is interesting to to think about because Winnipeg, you know, before all those defensemen just mm -hmm. either left or retired, um, I thought they would have been the stronger team. Now, I think, uh, I want to say Hellebuck is a better goalie mm -hmm. than Darcy Kemper slash anti Ranta, but the system that Arizona plays, you just, it's kind of like the Islanders. They're just stingy. They're not going to give up a lot of goals. Right. They also score by committee, which is very difficult to defend because you don't have, I mean, they have Phil Kessel now, but he's not what he was especially in Arizona so he's not he's not leading the team in scoring you know 30 40 goals or something he'll right. probably be more like a 20 to 30 goal guy okay um, but you you know it's not like Edmonton where you can shut down the top line and you're gonna win yeah it's it's even keel so it's a very interesting way of playing uh, it'll be interesting to see how well they can continually to do in the season um, I mean I'm kind of happy because Arizona's just I think they've made playoffs in this whatever what's the record for the sharks right now 16 years they made 15 and 16 yeah something. yeah i think arizona's one <laughs> year in those years so you just <laughs> never see them and i love them because they, they took their old winnipeg jets so they were the original winnipeg jets that moved to arizona yeah. or phoenix whatever back in the 90s they took their tradition with them of doing an all white out and this is before anyone else <laughs> was really doing this in any other league or any sport or anything um, so it's it's always cool to see because they really get everyone to white it out. Um, nice. It's really like such a stark contrast on TV. It's it's cool. It's a cool <laughs> look. But you don't see it anymore. Now other teams do it, so now it's not so special. But anyway. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Single tier for Arizona, but I think it's gonna be a tough game. <laughs> yeah. I think it'll be tough. It'll be like it'll remind me of the Islanders game. So I'm I'm expecting at least four points. Um, I would like to see six. I'd be happy with six. Okay. Uh, obviously, be happy with eight. Yeah. But, 
I think uh, six I'd be happy with, four I'd be disappointed with. Okay. I'm expecting four. Right. The four should be the bare minimum here, right? So, right. Um, but yeah, I think six is doable. Definitely doable. I mean, eight's doable, but I think, you know, six we should be able to either pull a couple OT losses or whatever, shootout losses. I'd like to see no OT or no. shootouts. Three wins and a loss. That's what you're thinking? Three wins and a loss. Okay. I'm happy with. You heard it here. Uh, by the way, uh, dad joke of the night. Um, how much does um, Winnipeg's goalie get paid? Hello Bucks. Hello Bucks. Thank you. Um, so uh, moving right along to EASHL, uh, we've got some screenshots for you this week. Last week we skipped over. I think we're going to do that every other week maybe, right? So um, we're going to go ahead and throw the uh, PS4 roster up on the screen for you right now. So uh, we got one guy who's charging up the uh, the roster there. Looks like you brought a friend over too. Who? So I looked oh. at this the other night. Oh, okay. The night or something. Okay. I hadn't seen him before. So we've got he's, a couple there. up there, yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. I think no. they're playing threes though. I don't think they're playing uh, sixes. Well, that's okay. Yeah. We're not going to hold it against him. You no, know why? I'll tell know. you why I'm not going to hold it against him. Because we're getting points. We're getting, we're getting points. We're getting bags. We're getting all the stuff that... That you know, Uncle Paul wants, right? Uh, Uncle to, Paul. That's right, buddy. That's, that sounds even worse <laughs> with that mustache. It does. Does it really no. does. The people in the podcast are like, I don't get it. <laughs> but no, uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's great though. <laughs> we're getting all the bags and all the stuff that we need. Um, you know, all the things that I was looking forward to to be able to uh, bolster up that arena. So uh, Nick and company, thank you guys so much for helping out. We do appreciate that. Um, do we have the Xbox roster? We I'm don't have sure. the roster. Okay. Uh, Patrick's gonna be out. I think for work okay. slash vacation, so he's not gonna be able to send it to me. But uh, we do have a highlight, uh, both one from the Xbox and one from the PlayStation. We'll play that right now. Nice. Toronto's grabbed a hold of the puck. The men in black have the puck in the open ice. Heads deep inside. He scores. I'm break the puck. Puck leaves the zone, forcing a mass exit. Nice move. Holy. That's going on the show, for sure. Those are some uh, really good goals that neither of us scored. Because <laughs> we're not that good. I know, my voice was on the, the PlayStation when I was yeah. playing in that game. and I was blown away, and you heard me say, oh, this is going on the show. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Come on. Well, I watched... We heard you say uh, a holy. Mm, yeah, I was like... Going to hold myself, because like, I might have to put this on the show. So. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Way to control yourself. I, it was not easy. <laughs> I did land a really good hit, and I couldn't really get the highlight in there. Uh, so that, that's my highlight. I hit a guy. Yeah, that's, you know, it's funny. That was my highlight, too. Yeah, his, yeah. I actually did score two goals in okay, one game. That's they were fair. both tips. I stood in front of the net and tipped both of them in. Not, not as fun. No, it's yeah. not as exciting. Okay. Like, like it's exciting when it happens and when you're playing, but it's not exciting to watch the replay. So, so Aaron gets a hit when a guy just get. I mean, he comes out of the penalty box and just absolutely destroys this guy. I was eyes. in the penalty box. Yeah, Aaron so comes out. I come out and they're coming on a three on one, and I just go straight to the guy with the puck <laughs> and I nail him. I don't, it, he didn't see me coming, but he passed the puck right before I hit him, and then they come and score right after. So, dude gets blasted. It gets knocked to the ground, and uh, one of your defensemen, I believe, accidentally skated over his head. Uh, which sent him into a helicoptering motion. So Aaron was really impressed with that one. You can see it on our uh, Twitch live stream recordings. Um, I don't know if I want to really say go ahead and watch us play Twitch because it's uh, <laughs> play NHL on Twitch rather. It's uh, it's it's ugly most times, but there yeah. are a few key moments. Depends on who's playing with us. Yeah, this not is bad. Not us that's doing the good the good stuff. I had one that I threw up on Twitter today on my my personal Twitter huh? account where uh, I hip checked Patrick Marlowe. Um, oh. Probably about fifteen to twenty feet uh, into the boards. Wow! I sent yeah, I sent him flying, and he was. I did the hip check. Was it a glitch? No, I did the hip check, and he just stayed right on my butt the whole time, <laughs> and I just carried him straight into the boards. It's beautiful. I so go uh, see that. at PT Sinceri on Twitter, if you get a chance, uh, take a look at that hit. It's uh, it's pretty funny. Nice. So uh, I had a good time doing it. But yes, Aaron and I get the hits. Uh, for our highlights, we can't score goals like the guys that just did that. So if you're able to score goals like these guys and you want to show uh, show them what's up, and even if you're not part of the club, that's totally cool too. We just want to throw some really good uh, some really good inspiration 
we'll call yeah. it for everybody on the team. So uh, if you'd like to go ahead and email us at uh, thefinfactor at gmail.com with your uh, your link, I suppose, or link if you or have the, the clip, clip itself. Yeah, the Xbox one was actually emailed there. There you it go. It was the clip, so I was able to download Perfect. it and put it up here. We'll, we'll have a look, and uh, if it's worthy, which it probably will be because we're not that good, <laughs> um, then we'll probably uh, feature it on the show. Yep. So there you go. Anything else you want to... Oh, uh, fantasy. Fantasy hockey. Yeah, there you Let's go. take a look. Uh, here is League One, and uh, oh, there there I am <laughs> at the top, still at the top. I can't believe it. My team is uh, getting hurt, too, so I was expecting to get dropped down, and okay. I'm still up there. Um, it's barely holding on. Barely. But <laughs> another win, or I think I tied this week in this league. Okay. Uh, but it's, So no movement. Not bad. Uh, and then let's take a look at the other league. Here's League 2, and I, oh, there, there I am again at the top. <laughs> this is fantastic. Feels really good, and I know it's it's still November, but yeah. it, I'm gonna milk it for all it's worth. <laughs> this is this is great. <laughs> it makes me feel really good about myself. I'm not gonna lie. You're, you're the GM for both these. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna call shenanigans right away. For what? Calling shenanigans. I don't know how you're doing it, buddy. I don't know how you're doing it. I'm good. Nope. <laughs> yeah, he's probably good. That's it. Yeah. There That's, you go. There's no other reason. Rock and roll. Okay. Cool. Anything else you wanna? Plug here. By the way, one last thing before we get out of here. If you've noticed over Aaron's uh, gigantic, bald, uh, glowing head, <laughs> um, the uh, Shark Freak jersey that we were able to pick up. A big thank you to Mr. Doug Bentz of the uh, San Jose Sharks, the VP of uh, Marketing and Digital, who we've had on the show twice. You can check out our interviews with him. Mm -hmm. And he actually kind of debuted some of these other jerseys or jerseys. This one for sure was yeah. on there. Uh, and I think he did two other ones. Well, yeah, yeah, if I interview. recall. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you're on podcast, pull up the, the YouTube uh, uh, video here and you can have a look at that uh, jersey. It's pretty sweet. We I really do like it. So um, there was that. And then um, I, I think that was it, actually. I just wanted to show off that one jersey. So yep. we're, we're good to go here. So um, again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I do apologize. I've been sick uh, for the past week or however long it's been. Um, thank you for putting up with my, uh, my crackling voice. And uh, me during the live, I think somebody might have caught me. I was I just wiped my nose real fast, and <laughs> the camera came back over, and I threw it as fast as I could, and just put my hand back on my lap like nothing happened, you know. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I appreciate you guys putting up with me, uh, and Aaron puts up with me too. Yep. So, and look for uh, we're gonna have a Black Friday sale yes. for our in our inventory for all of our swag. Yeah. So, uh, if you want to buy anything for anyone for the holidays, take a look at our store, and we'll send those out. Uh, I think an email, and we'll we'll blast it out on social media. So. Buy some Fin Factor stuff. There you go. Make sure you join our lives. We're having a really great time talking to all you guys, and we're converting St. Louis fans. So, <laughs> for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.